Hey guys, Crazy here, back into Final Fantasy VII Remake, and today I want to show you my full party setup, as well as the synergy that I'm using with all of these characters to make the most out of this, and also go against the toughest challenges in the game. You probably already saw my build videos in the past, where I cover certain items, well in this video, at your request, I kinda wanted to go and show you how I'm actually distributing all of these items, especially since not all of them come in unlimited amounts. Especially Especially those chain bangles, some of the material in the game that you can only get one or two examples of, and there's more that I want to talk in this video to make the most out of your party setup. So let's jump right into it, and as always, a thumbs up on this video would be super awesome. So this setup that I have right here is very good at pretty much everything in the game, since it deals all kinds of damage from all kinds of sources, including melee as well as spellcasting. There's also a ton of ways to keep my party alive, including a ton of healing abilities abilities, a lot of ways to mitigate damage, and there's also a ton of ways to resurrect my fallen party mates in case that ever happens in the game. Of course, going over a quick rundown of all of the items that all of my characters are using, I have Cloud with the Hard Edge, the Cog Bangle, and Fury Ring. I've covered Fury Ring in a previous video, and I'm simply in love with this. It makes characters that use it so much more powerful, so um, this is probably the best alternative to the Gora Damarang, since it increases your damage damage um, like crazy levels. I'm also having Tifa with a very similar setup, Metal Knuckles, Cock Bangle and also the second Fury Ring that goes really well with her build and her two lockup materials that I'm going to go over in just a little bit. Um, Aerith is the one that's gonna use the Chain Bangle with the Silver Staff and the Whistle Wind Scarf. Now why am I using this? The Chain Bangle is because, well, Aerith kinda needs a lot more materia slots to shine, she needs a lot of materia that deals with basic resources like mana as well as HP so I kind of need the headroom for that and I'm also using the whistlewind scarf so that she can always start casting in battles and put pressure on the enemy right away but other characters are doing that as well and finally I'm using Barret with the big Bertha the cog bangle and the healing carcanet he is not really a healer more of like a tank support but he does have healing abilities that don't cost MP so yeah, they aren't that powerful, that's why I need to buff them with the healing Karkonet. Moving on to Materia distribution, this is what I'm rolling with 95% of the time, though there are some changes that I'm going to talk about later on as we reach them. So for Cloud's melee build, I'm going with an Elemental plus Spell, I'm going with HP Absorb and Deadly Dodge, a Skill Master and a Steadfast Block, two HP Ups and finally a First Strike Materia. Basically, this build lets me deal high damage and still have a spell to put some pressure on the enemy even though that's not the main focus but those spells they are still very useful in your arsenal and this also makes my weapon deal more damage that HP absorb and the deadly dodge makes me heal more when dealing damage with a deadly dodge against enemies so again quite useful and I'm also having all of those ways to generate ATB like for example using the stat fast block to block incoming damage and increase my ATP gauge or maybe the skill master since I am more often than not using way more than three abilities in the same succession so this gives me a ton of ATB back to immediately start using it against the enemy. For Tifa I'm running with a spell plus time materia, I'm using an ATP stagger and an ATP assist, I'm also using two luck up materials, two HP up materials and finally a deadly dodge. Now the reason I'm not using an elemental materia and linking it to a spell like how I did it on cloud is because I needed the room for time materia so the only option was to actually take it out but time materia is way more valuable on a character like Tifa since I can buff my party mates even myself and also stop the enemies both in their regular states and when staggered also the ATB assist and the ATB stagger are very useful especially that ATB stagger and stagger is something that Tifa is very good at and um, the ATB assist lets me assist my my party mates and give them more ATB gauge when I'm using the same two abilities in a quick succession or repeating it, which is something that Tifa does all the time. Um, two lockups is what I've experimented with lately. I wanted to combine this with the Fury Ring to kinda give her a ton of damage.
damage, a ton of bonuses to critical hits, so this is what helps me with that, and the rest are pretty much all about survivability, and also keeping that deadly dodge, like how I said in the previous videos, that lets me tie in the animations with her and make things so much easier. For Aerith, she is the mage slash healer of the party, so she has a magnified healing, a revival materia, a spell damage, she also has a first strike materia, and from here on it's just stats, which is why I also needed that chain bangle. So MP up, one of them, two HP ups, and finally two magic ups. Basically what I want to do with this build is to kind of do everything with a reasonable margin, so I have enough healing to party wide keep everything alive, and I'm also having a revival in case somebody dies in battle and I can constantly keep them alive and resurrect them, and also have enough left for a spell to be a main source of damage and constantly put pressure on the enemy, especially with that arcane ward. One single spell is more than enough, again, up until now you probably saw one spell ability on all of these characters, so my suggestion would be to kinda run with different setups on each one of them, so if one has fire, maybe the other ones might go with lightning or even blizzard, since it could work well against big groups of enemies with different resistances, or if you're running up against a single enemy, a big boss that has one single weakness, you can put one single spell on all of them at the same time and put even more pressure. Barret, the tank slash support, is going to use a spell in this case, a barrier, a revival, the skill master that I'm going to explain in just a little bit, the two main healing abilities including the chakra and the prayer materia, and one HP up to keep that survivability for a little bit longer. I've also added an MP up materia, and finally the steadfast block that is mandatory for his build. I will also add this, I'm only using that spell damage materia as a placeholder, it can be something else, but most of the time I'm actually using it with the magnified barrier, so that I can provide a full party barrier that protects all of my teammates, and it's an all-around amazing source at that. Again, it's a matter of choice between having party-wide healing and party-wide barrier, this depends on the fight, and more often than not it's going to be better to go with a party-wide barrier and use the prey to keep your party alive. Alive. Now as far as my strategies go, there are two types of strategies that I'm using at the start of the fight depending what the boss or enemy does right then. So if it's a boss that doesn't attack in the first few seconds and I have enough room to do it myself, I go in with this first strike party setup that lets me immediately set up Aerith and Cloud to deal double damage with their double casts at the start of the fight, immediately put pressure on the enemy and deal more damage than I would have if I were to wait and build that ATB gauge on all of these characters. Otherwise, if the boss is the one that initiates the attack, like for example Bahamut, Pride and Joy, Leviathan, they all start immediately attacking and they can interrupt your setup, then in this case I might not be using a first strike materia and replace it with something else, maybe even something that provides me spell absorb, like for example against Bahamut and Ifrit, I'm using the spell absorb technique against Ifrit to make him my personal healer for or Barret, so that he can basically be a um, immortal god that also keeps the rest of his party alive. But in this case, as soon as the fight starts, I'm doing one thing, always doing one thing, and that is using my main character, in this case Cloud, to redirect the boss's attention to this character and kind of pull him away from the rest of the group and also spread the group up. Now this lets me do a couple of things. First, it lets me achieve a balance in terms of mitigating damage, as in all of the damage is going to be concentrated on one single character, in this case Cloud that is really resilient, so that Barret can easily heal him, or maybe even Aerith can easily heal him and keep him alive, and if he dies in battle he can easily be resurrected. The second thing that this lets me achieve is having enough room for the rest of my team to move and spellcast, especially for Aerith, if she has enough room in the back to just sit there and continuously cast, this means she's going to be the highest party DPS and she has huge damage and pressure that she can put on the target without any interruption, and also have enough room for Barret, for example to cast his life saving abilities. 
A second strategy that actually deals way more damage at the expense of some of the tankiness that your party now doesn't have anymore is to replace Barret, for example with Tifa or maybe even replace Cloud with Tifa though in that case you would lose access to those really awesome counter attacks that yeah Tifa doesn't really have access to. In that case you would play it in a very similar way you would have two DPS that could potentially stagger an enemy way faster and also stop its stagger meter. In that case you would probably start in a very similar way to the previous one as in that double damage cast with Cloud and Aerith. Meanwhile while the casting is still going on you would go in with Tifa, try to build that ADB gauge so that you can immediately jump into 2 times unbridled strength that again further provides more ATB to the rest of the teammates so they can spam their abilities even more. This would also make it so that certain abilities that are only casted by bosses after a certain amount of time has passed might be avoided since you don't even reach that point anymore so that would mean you would avoid a full party wipe but yeah this is basically the strategy that i'm using most of the time of course you are free to use it in a different way there's many combinations that can work but this is the one that worked the best for me anyway let me know down below what you think about this in the meantime as always if you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe as well as activating that notification bell and i will see you guys in the next one